Hi there, welcome back. I'm wearing a kimono because I am cool. It's the new year. New year, same me because I ain't changing for shit. That's good for you because the content's not going to change. Probably bad for me because I am very unhealthy. <laughs> uh, this year started out great. I was feeling better, you know, I was getting along with everyone. Uh, however, that did all come crashing down the moment Netflix released their documentary about the hype house. I've watched a lot of bad things for this channel. However, this documentary might be the worst thing I've ever seen. This show, I feel like this show wanted to be made in like 2020. You know, when there were actually relevant people in the hype house. You know, they had Charlie D'Amelio, Dixie D'Amelio, Addison Ray, other people. I feel like I would have found this show more interesting if I actually knew who anyone in the show was. But maybe that's just a quirky thing about me. Today we're going to be talking about TikToker documentaries. What are they? Why are they? And will I ever recover from the D'Amelio show? Right then, let's do this. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of Netflix? You know, the company that has made some of the most well-received shows of the last 10 years? Well, apparently it seems to have all gone downhill for them uh, because on the 7th of January, 2022, they decided to ruin our lives by releasing the Hype House documentary. Now, this show was announced back in April of 2021 to, um, mixed reviews to say the least um there were a lot of people threatening to cancel their netflix subscriptions and a lot of people saying that if they made it they'd you know die which might be a slight over exaggeration but you know but so everyone was kind of questioning why would netflix do this what was going through their heads have they hit rock bottom so after all of the backlash i think most of us kind of assumed that they weren't gonna go ahead with the show or it had been cancelled or at least we all forgot about it so then out of nowhere imagine my surprise when the show is released and now we have eight episodes of to be honest pure shit to get through let's do it it's like cheesecake factory i don't know i love cheesecake factory so when rise i stepped in the house i was like come on give me the bread where is it i need the bread and butter it's literally like going into cheesecake factory you know there's there's cheesecake everywhere and so much on the menu that you feel quite agitated. Growing up in Stockton, I was like trapped in a bubble and no one to collaborate with. I made videos by myself. Oh, I'm sorry. I Am I not being empathetic enough? I'm trying to feel really sad for you and your hard life of not having anyone to collaborate with. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. So throughout the first episode and really the first few episodes, for each of the cast members, they have like these weird like you know that TikTok morph effect where it goes from like one photo and it morphs into the next yeah they have that for all of the members of the cast and it's just weird it's just weird and stupid you know you know the famous beatles song uh strawberry fields whatever that's another thing they have these weird like caption things through the whole series and barely any of them ever make sense to what is going on Oh, my life is so hard. Oh, this show was already weird. And then this happened. I forgot to say it in the recording, but um, what the fuck? One thing I didn't actually expect from this show was that Nikita Dragon would be featured so heavily. Now, I didn't even know she was in the hype house, like, what? I guess she. I guess she's just in the hype house. You have majority of the space in the shower. You also have majority of the closet space itself. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't mean to laugh at their argument. I just literally mean like, why is there like the 2012 vlog music over their argument? Honestly, you are just mean and disrespectful to me. Honestly, I can't even do this with you. <laughs> documentary infuriates me and it's because half of it is people going oh no we held a party during a global pandemic and that was a bad thing oh no oh, stupid one thing i've got to wonder is um why the interviews are being done in a bus 
was was the house busy that day or did they run out of money and they just had to get a weird school bus and put some bean bags in it there are a lot of stylistic choices in this show that i quite frankly don't understand but you know that's just a quirky thing about me i guess what i'm being told is apparently you might have got too intoxicated and like somehow forced larry to come knowing he had covid wait who is, is saying this truth? This is coming from Larry's team directly, his management team. So, so his management team is blaming me? I just get the feeling that this isn't real. This is just fake. Like, I get it's reality TV, but, like, I doubt a very small percentage of this show isn't, like, kind of set up. Like, this isn't even a good reality TV show. Like, I love reality TV. Look at me. Does this face scream hater of reality TV? This just isn't a good reality TV show, okay? It just isn't. Because I don't feel invested in these people's drama because they don't mean anything to me. I don't feel any connection to these people because, quite frankly, I look at them and I think, you're a piece of shit. Alex! Alex, why are you in Connor's room? Guys, I know it's a pandemic, but I need to film my video, you know? I need to get a million views for pushing my friend off of a cliff. These people are all irrelevant. I don't know who any of them are. Alex Warren is one of them. Uh, I actually like him less than I did when it started, and I had no idea who he was when it started, so he's not on the right path. <laughs> Haha, uh -huh, they poured flour over his head. Laugh, please. It's 2013. Prank wars. Laugh. Why aren't you laughing? You're a horrible person. You were a horrible person for not laughing. <laughs> well, I guess they remembered it was too long without Chase on screen. Chase Hudson is the only person in this documentary who I know who he is. And that's because of the second documentary we're going to cover, so... We'll get to that. Dr. Nasiri yeah. wants you on vocal rest. Losing my voice has put a lot of thoughts in my head. All I want to do is get out there and perform for people. And if I'm out there losing my voice every other week, it can't be able to, to last the long haul. He's doing really well on vocal rest during this interview, I have to say. You don't think about it, but most people on vocal rest go on vocal rest, but... Not Chase. He talks. He's really quite brave. Uh, you might be getting from the tone of my voice that I don't particularly like many of these members. Um, and you would be completely right, I don't, so. Super dodgy! Yeah, 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 yeah! Uh, that's not a good thing. Uh, being super dodgy is not a good thing. You don't come home and say, yeah, mum, you're gonna love my new boyfriend. He's super dodgy. That's how you get kicked out of the house. It's just that I am entirely educated by this documentary, so... Another weird editing decision they made is to have these kind of weird TikToks, which is where they just play what would or it was already playing, but with just a cropped aspect ratio, and as if it's a TikTok. And they all have, like, a concerning amount of likes. Like, when it started, I was like, what? Like, how, is, how does this all have, like, 18 million likes in a row? Oh, it's fake. They're making it up. Which is actually my realisation about the whole show. <laughs> like, that time that you got caught up at the party that I was at, but then your manager blamed me for being at the party that you were motherfucking at. I didn't even know you were upset about that, and I didn't even know that was happening, because I wasn't told about it. This is the pettiest argument I've ever seen. I'm not feeling very hyped about the hype house, so take what you will. Yeah, I mean, 30 million views and a billboard on Sunset, but let me go back to filming my Netflix show. You know what Nikita's doing? Nikita's Dragon. Get it? Because her name's Nikita Dragon. Get it? Get it, guys? Do you get my... J it was a funny joke. It was It was a funny joke, okay? It was a funny... J I've held back for so long in my life, and I didn't even think I would get this far. So I'm just like, what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? You could end up on a shitty show about an irrelevant TikTok house. We are going to be starting- No 
wonder his content's getting less views than normal. This is boring as shit. It's 100% a shit show and I absolutely love it. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic content. These people are so driven by views, you know? Like, the question isn't, is this okay? You know, will this hurt anyone around me? It's, is this good content? Will it do well? That's, that's not a healthy mindset. Sure, I feel a bit bad for pushing my dad off a cliff earlier, but it's gonna get hella views. <laughs> Plus his funeral's gonna be very highly attended. It could even be a Twitter moment for two hours. So they're talking about a fake wedding and I've actually found the video that, you know, that was made out of this. We're gonna watch it. We're <laughs> heading to our We're home. not, it's not you a real place. <laughs> yep, that's enough of that for me. On a serious note, I love and appreciate you. And now for the cameras. I love you. Oh, the camera. I love you. What do you mean the cam- I can see the camera, it's right! It can get overwhelming at some points because you want to be alone sometimes, but also I went from making just TikTok content and maybe streaming for an hour to posting every day, streaming for four to five hours a day, making content for TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube and Twitch, you know, modeling, photo shoots, and it takes a toll on you. The thing with this show, they try to make us feel bad for them in between showing us shots of their mansion. Just been a really hard week for me, you know, this my, this video just did a hundred thousand views less than usual, and you know, I just don't know if I'm gonna be relevant forever and it's just really hard for me and I just don't know what's going on and I'm, <laughs> I'm so sad. So there's a long scene with Lorraine and his roommate and I just don't have anything to say else to say about this show. I think you kind of get the vibe that maybe I'm not the biggest fan of it. Like, this show, it's a mess. This show is a mess. Like, it's... <sighs> well, it's just not a good show. The people who made this show have severely messed up. Um, and I think this show is getting as hated on as it should. Sorry. Right, then let's just move on to the next one before I run away. Red leather yellow, red yellow le mm. The other show I'm gonna be talking about today is The D'Amelio Show. Red leather, yellow leather, red yellow. These two shows are exactly the same, but also wildly different. They're wildly different in the fact that I like The D'Amelio Show. I think it's a good show, kind of. It has its fair share of dumb moments like that is not a joke it has some boring moments some slightly weird privileged moments and just some mind-numbingly dumb moments however i think this show gets more hatred than it deserves okay i'm gonna backtrack so you know what the d'amelio show is uh the d'amelio show is a reality docu-series focusing on those girls from tiktok um or as i now know them the D'Amelio sisters. There's Charlie and Dixie. Uh, it also has a parents in it, uh, but they are in it uh, about as much as the dogs. Actually, I'd, I'd say less than dogs. Uh, so this first came to my attention when I opened up Disney Plus, uh, a service I haven't used since High School Musical the Musical the series ended. Don't worry, season three is coming. Um, and that began the addiction and I have watched it five times. So the thing with the D'Amelio show that makes it more bearable is it seems like a much more real show than the Hype House show. Because the thing with the Hype House show is there is so much stupid complaining about things that they're privileged to have in the first place. And I don't feel connected to any of the characters. And although the D'Amelio does have its fair share of that, there are some, some very real moments in there that if they're fake, is quite frankly horrid that they faked that. So everyone I've seen who's watched The D'Amelio Show has kind of come to the same conclusion. I think everyone watched it to ha ha, let's laugh at the funny TikTok sisters. Um, and then I think everyone slightly feels bad for them by the end of it. Like there's this scene early on, I think in episode one, where Charlie has her entire 2021 laid out in front of her. You're like, even the show is part of it. It's it's all there. Like that's, that sounds like something from some weird dystopian like horror film or something, you know? Can you tell I don't watch a lot of horror? But like, 
Imagine having your entire life, like everything you're going to do in the course of a year, just laid out for you. And then you have to take it in. Like, what the fuck? And they are having these breakdowns, these like severe mental breakdowns because of how like stressed they feel. And, uh, and, oh, uh, it's just weird. You just see these managers making so many decisions and the weight that kind of lies on them because of that. I also forgot to say that her main manager, like the main guy who's like presenting this all to her, is one of the executive producers on the show. Like if you look in the credits, he's one of the executive producers. And that just makes me laugh quite a bit because he does not come across as the good guy in this show. So I guess they really are going for unfiltered or maybe he was just severely misguided in making himself look good. That's just wanted, what I wanted to add. Now back to um, me from the past. But this show is a better reality show than The Hype House. I genuinely feel for the people in it, and it didn't make me want to jump into an active volcano. So, D'Amelio Show, you did good. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I wanted to end this video by giving you some good celebrity documentaries to watch because contrary to popular belief, uh, they do exist, kind of. Uh, Trixie Mattel's Moving Parts is really good. Uh, Miss Americana by Taylor Swift is really good. Billie Eilish's documentary is really good. Um, yeah, that's about it, goodbye. I'm better than Burton, no not Tim, I'm talking to Burton, I'm better than him, he can't play the bass for shit, the look on his face, when I pick it up, super dodgy, yeah.